Hello, happy Sunday. A very wet and cold one today, which is unfortunate because it's the full moon and I really like seeing the full moon. Um, and a lot of you probably are aware, I normally do beach meditations through the warmer month with the full moon. And the full moon or the moon as a planet in my astrology chart is actually in the house of Korea, which is interesting because I do incorporate it in my business. I hope you're all well. Um, I want to talk about the full moon and how it impacts us because a lot of people don't sleep well around a full moon. So I looked into it and there's been research done on this and what they proved is that it's in fact a fact. <laughs> people can't sleep during full moons and initially they said it was because there's more light but when they did the first um, research that I looked at, when they did that one, they put people in rooms with no outdoor light and they still couldn't sleep well. So it's not the additional light. And a more recent study shows us that it's actually the days leading up to the full moon that people have the least amount of sleep. Interesting. They still don't know why. I think we know why. It's the energy, right? And that's the only conclusion they could think of but couldn't prove is that it's the gravitational pull of the moon. Now we know that the ocean rises, the tide rises typically around a full moon. So that would suggest that there is some sort of energy pulling something going on there, right? So the belief is that it amplifies, the full moon amplifies everything. If it's rising the tide, it's amplifying. So for you that might be, you've got so much energy running through you, you can't sleep. It might amplify other aspects of your life. I'd love to hear if you've got anything you want to share in the comments. And the other thing too that I wasn't aware of, this is the moon of Sagittarius, I was aware of that, but what I wasn't aware of is that throughout the entire cycle of the moon, from one full moon to the next, it actually goes through all the different zodiac signs. So really this moon in Sagi is only for a couple of days. Interesting, but in that couple of days, it's being amplified, right? And if you know any Sagittarians, if you are a Sagittarius, they're very uh, self-expressive, shall we say. <laughs> so this is the time for that. This is the time to express yourself. Something I hadn't considered either is the Sagittarian symbol, or not the symbol, the actual image of the archer. It's the only zodiac sign that has a weapon. Hmm, interesting, right? So wherever you are, have a think about what you'd like to do with this energy. Use it to your advantage. There's actually a practice called moon bath. If you're not sure what that is, it means standing outside, so you've got nothing in between you and the moon, even if it's behind a cloud, and just looking into its light for two minutes. And imagine yourself being bathed with the light of the moon. And imagine it going into all the little dark places inside you and shining a light on it because that's where the release comes in. For the full moon we usually cleanse and release, same as putting your crystals out, that kind of stuff to cleanse. So the full moon is a time for cleansing and releasing. So if you want to practice a moon bath, do it for two minutes minimum. That's all you need. You can do it longer if you like and see how you feel after that. So there you go. The moon does impact us. Not sure why, <laughs> but it does. I'll see you next week. Bye for now.